Hey everybody, Trisha Hirschberger here with Aaron from Corsair. How are you today? Pretty good, how are you doing? Good, thank you so much for coming on. I love coming out here, showing off new technology. Well, speaking of new technology, right off the bat, why don't you tell me what Corsair is most excited about with this drive? For the MP600, it's really about the next generation of storage technology. So with PCIe 4.0, they're doubling the available bandwidth that devices can run on, which is great for us. For this drive, we're able to hit 4850 megabytes per second in a sequential read, and the write speeds are pretty impressive as well. Overall, this is gonna give people a better experience when they're building this next generation platform that you can hold on to for the next five or six years. Awesome, and I know you touched on this a little bit with that answer, but let's go a little deeper. There's a lot of buzz right now about PCIe fourth generation, and especially with the new AMD X570 motherboards coming out equipped with several Gen 4 slots. So what is the big deal? Is it faster? How much faster than we're used to seeing? So it's actually doubling the available bandwidth from 32 to 64, and that's going to give you the ability to write more data to devices that are plugged into that. For a graphics card, you're going to see a lot more as far as PCIe bandwidth. But for storage, it's really about that by four slot, that M.2 NVMe, which is the MP600. Um, you're able to get theoretically up to eight gigabits a second, and someday we'll be able to hit that. Right now with the current architecture um, with this drive, we're able to see about 4850 megabytes per second, and that's a lot faster than what PCIe 3.0 was able to do. Those drives were typically topping out around 34, 3500. So you're able to see a much higher uh, sequential read and write um, across the drive. And for power users, content creators, people using RAID, you're gonna see a significant improvement in things that you do from load times to you know levels loading in a game. Um, okay. Because you're gonna get that data back a lot quicker across that bus back to the CPU and you're going to see that when you load a game. And that's really where it's gonna come across. Some of the stuff, ISO file transfers, um, stuff like that is something where you're really gonna see a big difference going from one to the other. So for gamers specifically, you mentioned faster game load times. Is there anything else that your average PC gamer would see beneficially coming out of a drive like this? Um, the read and write, since they're faster, installation is also gonna go a little bit faster, but cool. it's also gonna be limited by you know your what your download speed is. With most game engines these days, they're gonna download and kind of install at the same time, and they're gonna run in the background. So it depends on your internet connection speed. But if you have that already downloaded on your drive, you're gonna be able to install that much faster because it's just gonna rip through that data transfer basically as it unpacks and installs that game. Love it. And what do these read and write speeds that are so impressive mean to the average PC user, maybe in a non-gaming setting? Without larger files, you're not really gonna see much of a difference because the transfer speeds are high enough on, on PCI 3.0 that you know if you're just opening a small Excel spreadsheet is really gonna take advantage of larger file sizes. Games these days are huge when you're downloading and installing, it's like 60 gig files. And so are movies. Yes. If you like to watch movies on your computers or uh, even content creators, maybe uh, w would this be beneficial to video editors? Absolutely, editors? if okay. you're doing 4K and higher resolutions, you're gonna have huge data files. And so when you wanna process that, if you're rendering or doing whatever, you're going to see an advantage in any read-write format for larger file sizes. Yeah, okay, great. Because I mean, obviously for me, I'm always looking for how this is gonna be beneficial to gaming use cases. But for anybody who might be watching this video that's not so heavy into gaming, they would see an improvement from these read and write speeds as well. Absolutely, when it comes to content creation, you know, you're gonna have stuff with, you know, all your Adobe suites, especially if you're producing video or you're rendering. You're gonna have really large file sizes. And when you deal with those file sizes, read and write, you're gonna see a little bit of an increase when it comes to how you're able to do that. Okay, so do you see fourth gen PCIe becoming the norm for motherboards and uh, storage solutions moving forward? It is for the AMD ecosystem. Okay. So Intel right now doesn't really quite have that on their roadmap at this time. But AMD is ahead of the game when they came to implementing this. And that's what is really exciting about the X570 platform yeah. and the fact that they have this next generation technology and that storage subsystem is is really good. So when you're moving, you know, even from a 470 or a 450 chipset to the 570 and you get uh, the NVMe PCIe 4.0, you're gonna see an increase in what you do. Now the new CPUs are obviously they have really good instruction per clock, so you're gonna get more when going with an X570 platform and the 3000 series CPUs. I'm actually really excited about this because, you know, 
having been a fan of gaming and, and the whole thing for a long time, seeing a little bit of competition in the marketplace is amazing. It's so good. So we're really happy and I'm sure all the you know people out there are happy because they get you know more choices. Right. And there's a lot more people streaming. There's a lot more people who are doing video editing, photo editing, because it's just easier to do now on a home system. And you know, when you have something that has eight, 12 cores available to you at, on a just regular desktop platform, you're gonna be able to do a lot more, a lot faster, yeah. just because multi-threaded is going to be so much higher. And all those content creator programs can take full advantage of, you know, eight and 12 cores. Right, and there's a lot of people right now that do live stream content and you know run the game and stream off the same PC, and that is, like you said, getting easier and easier to do, which is awesome. So you brought up kind of talking about the next gen of technology and where things are going and that AMD is moving that direction, and one of the buzzwords we hear a lot around PCIe 4.0 is future-proof. So can you explain for those at home what, what future-proofing is and why we talk about it when we talk about fourth-gen PCIe. So future-proofing is really about, you know, people use their computers for a long time now. You know, the general cycles, you know, four, five, six years, you're gonna keep something. And you want to be able to take whatever components you buy now, use it in the later build, or make sure that if you do do a new build that that component is going to be able to use. You don't wanna have to build a whole new you know, system from the ground up every time. Right. You may want to. That's fine, but a lot of people, you know, are looking to reuse certain components. This drive, with it being 4.0, any platform in the future is going to either have that or be backwards compatible to do it. So even if, you know, a few years down the road, 5.0 came out, 4.0 is backwards compatible. It works with 3.0 systems, um, so there's no problem there. So you can actually take this drive and use it in the future again. And because of the drive itself and the way it's able to be written to, it can last for you for a very long time, which is great because you buy it now, four or five years down the road, you're still able to use it. Even if you build a new platform, you're still able to use it. Now, what do you say to kind of the naysayers out there that think future-proofing, that just means it's tech I can't use yet and you want to charge me more money for it now. What do you say to those consumers? Luckily, with this platform, yeah. you can use it now. Um, and the speed is there. You do see the speed upgrade. And so even in the future, you're going to see them improve I.O. And that would be better for all of us as far as those drives are concerned. So what are really the benefits of PCIe 4.0 compared to non-PCIe drives? So NVMe itself and PCIe are directly connected to the CPU. And so instead of going through the Southbridge or you know kind of the older generation SATA 6G drives, you're very limited in, in the direct access to the CPU. And because of this, there are lanes in the 3000 CPU that are directly connected to one of the by four PCIe 4.0 slots. You have direct access and M.2 drives as a whole are able to access the CPU directly is a lot better than having to go through the South Bridge because you're gonna get better performance overall. Makes total sense. So what kind of components make up a drive like the 4 Series MP600? So there's going to be a controller, um, some cache memory, and then the actual NAND itself that you're reading and writing to all the time. The MP600 actually uses a Fizon E16 controller, which is the first Gen 4 PCIe 4.0 controller available. And so that's why we've partnered with them in order to make the MP600. And that drive itself has basically the ability to interconnect at those 4.0 speeds. In Corsair's marketing material for the 4 Series MP600, you guys, and I quote, uh, say, high density 3D TLC NAND as one of the drive's key features. Could you explain what that is for people who aren't familiar with very specific SSD lingo? TLC is triple layer cell. So basically there's SLC, MLC, and TLC. And the SLC is single layer, the ML is multi-layer. And basically it's just how you address those. So it's the layers that you have in the drivers, the amount of bits you're able to store per segment. So the 3D part of it is kind of how it's accessed and how it's stored. There's a lot of technical detail behind that. Um, but basically it allows that um, TLC to perform and have the longevity of, of getting closer to SLC that's out there right now. So the price to performance is really there when using the 3D TLC NAND. And you mentioned longevity. Uh, SSDs are already, they'll last way longer than a traditional platter drive. So will this drive go beyond even what we're used to seeing from uh, previous generation SSDs? For this particular drive, it's 3,600 terabytes. Wow. So 
unless you are an excessively <laughs> heavy power user, right. um, you're not really going to get close to that. Now, the great thing about SSDs and, and one of the reasons people moved to them were because there are no moving parts. There's less mechanical failure. And so, you know, if you've ever had a ticking hard drive in the past or something where a platter didn't work, you know, it's not something like that. So this is- And dropped your laptop. Oh no. <laughs> Lost all that data. Right. <laughs> Um, so there's, without that moving mechanical parts, it's already more reliable. Awesome. Um, and with the data, you know, written to it, you can get a long time of, of reading and writing to that drive. Well, and longevity is very important when we then also talk about future proofing. So if this is something you want to keep for years and years and years, you want to make sure that it can keep up with your use, even if you're a super heavy user. Um, all right, so let's talk about the heat sink on this one. Why go with a heat sink like what we see here? How hot can users expect this new technology to run? With more data being processed in the same space, there's more heat generated. Sure. So in this case, we do have a heat sink because without the heat sink, that much data over a long period of time can get to the point where it may throttle and start writing at a lower speed. With the heat sink, you don't have to worry about that. A lot of the motherboard manufacturers have actually put this into their marketing material because they've seen this where even with last generation, if you start writing repeatedly a lot of data over a long period of time, it will heat up. You have sure. a lot of data being processed in a very small space yeah. um, with the M.2 form factor, and you need to dissipate that somewhere. So a lot of them have integrated the heat sinks into the higher end board so that they can keep those drives running at a non-throttling temperature. You want that heat sink on there, and it does its job to keep this drive from throttling even when it's at its highest speeds. Very cool. Okay, so can we expect Corsair to kind of spearhead the momentum going into PCIe 4.0 moving forward? We really like new technologies and being, you know, first to market and trying to get that stuff out there because that's who we are as a company. And, you know, we're all enthusiasts and we love doing this stuff because, you know, building the PC and seeing where it's going for the next generation, you know, it brings a fresh perspective into building and playing and content creation. So there's so much more that we can do uh, if we just stay ahead of the curve. And that new technology makes us, you know, very happy as personal people. So it's great when we can go out there and, and sell that solution to somebody so that they can have the same benefits that we do when we're playing around in the lab. Very cool. And Aaron, what gets you personally most excited about PCIe 4th Gen? Well, I really like the platform that it's on and I'm really excited about it. I personally was able to find and buy a 3900X this morning, which I thought was a great thing. <laughs> because I've been shopping for it for a couple weeks now. Cool. Um, and so just building the new platform and getting all this new technology um, is something that I'm excited about. I'm excited about this new platform and what it brings to the market, especially for all of our customers and for the people who are out there building new systems right now. You have more options yeah. and more options are always gonna be great. Now, being on the forefront of PCIe 4.0, is Corsair doing anything to help the X570 motherboard launch? Absolutely. So, you know, we look forward to new platform launches all the time and, you know, having other products. We have coolers, PSUs, cases. So we really look at everything that someone's going to need for a new build if they were doing a new ground up build. In this case, we have, you know, our platinum coolers, which is the H100i Platinum and the H115i Platinum, um, which is uh, a couple of coolers that we have here in the system as well um, in our build. And they all have AM4 brackets in the box. So all of our coolers that we've sold for probably the last five years are all AM4 compatible out of the box. So they support the X570 platform because AMD hasn't gone and done anything crazy like changing the socket on us, which we really like. <laughs> uh, so that's amazing. And we also have all of our PSUs. We have our RM, RMX power supplies, um, really anything um, over the last five years, six years that supports this platform. Now for this stuff, because there is a little higher TDP on some of the higher core count stuff, People are moving you know, a little bit more from 650 to 750 and 850s just to kind of future-proof themselves as far as what they want to do in the future. Um, just because you see new graphics cards coming out, we're in a period of time where they were trying to lower the TDP so everything kind of went down, but then they went, oh, performance. So now some of this <laughs> stuff's up to 250 watts for a TDP on the graphics card, so a little bit higher um, 
PSU wattage will make sense when you're doing a build like that. As far as our new cases that are out there, we have really looked at like the performance because now you have these higher TDP components. So the CPU and the GPU are all putting a little bit more heat. You really have to have a lot more cooling in there. So um, we have stuff like our 678C or even our 500D chassis. Right here we have our 570X chassis. Um, and what we do is make sure that when you put these systems in there, it's gonna work and it's going to work the first time. Yeah. Um, so you don't want it to be overheating because you don't want it to be throttling. Sure. Um, so you have to make sure you have the performance there. And we have other components in order to make sure that you have your whole build come together. And with something like this build, we have IQ that ties it all together. So all of your lighting can be controlled through our IQ software. And that means that you also have game integration there as well. So you're building it and you're playing and you can go ahead and you know have the lighting effects on your PC or on your keyboard and mice um, because you can integrate all of our products into that one ecosystem, and that's the IQ ecosystem. Aaron, thank you so much for being here today, and thanks to the folks at Corsair for lending you to us for the day. Thanks so much to everyone at home for watching this video, and make sure that you stay tuned right here to Newegg for more awesome content.